just like that guys so today we're going to be talking about summer fishing specifically how to target fish in the early morning to beat the heat where they go in the afternoon time find their spots make them more predictable and a couple of our favorite lures to throw this time of year so if you haven't already hit the subscribe button down below and stay tuned All right guys, today we're gonna to be talking about catching bass in the summer, a time where a lot of people struggle and some will even pack it up. You won't see them again until either the fall transition or possibly even the pre-spawn of next year. But if you're like us and you like to fish for bass year round, we're gonna show you how their behaviors actually become pretty predictable through the summertime and how to locate them. Now, as we spoke about in a previous video, there's sort of a split after the spawn where some of the bass will push out into the deeper water and some will stay up into the shallow water. Now, one of the reasons they stay in the shallow water is because as the temperature of the water increase, the oxygen levels will decrease and the bass know that these reeds and tules are a great source of oxygen so they'll boat up right against them and actually bury their tails in there a lot of the time and sit and both kind of ambush prey and take advantage of the shade. And that's what we mean by their behavior becoming predictable in the summertime. Whether they've chosen to push out deep or stay in that shallow water, once they've decided where to stay after the spawn, they're gonna pretty much stick to that area all the way through the fall transition until after the thermal climb breaks and they get into their winter pattern. And then it really just becomes a question of what to throw at them. As you can see, we've had a lot of success lately with the swim jig and a Kitech trailer. And that's a great thing to throw along reeds and toolies like this because you can stay weedless and uh, not only you know get a reaction bite out of them but for some of those bass that have pushed out in the deep in the early morning they'll come up tight because if you've got shad in your lake right after the spawn is when the shad hatch and they will come up in the morning and feed in the first couple hours in the morning on the shad and then they'll also feed on other bass fry as well so if you see little schools of bass fry uh, swimming around up shallow don't be afraid to throw you know a small uh, swim bait something like that around there and you'd be surprised that you can catch some pretty decent sized bass in the morning and When it comes to color selection for the most part I try to match the hatch and all that that means is essentially just Imitating what the bass are naturally feeding on in that lake or pond now bluegill are pretty commonly found fish in these bodies of water So you really can't go wrong with a bluegill style swim jig and some sort of bluegill or sungill style uh, Kitech trailer a lot of times it's less about imitating a bait fish or something like that and more about water clarity and just making sure that you have the right color selection so that your bait is being seen. As you can see here, this water is a little murkier. It also has more of a greenish tint to it. So red is a great contrast color. One of my favorite things to throw in this type of application is a red lipless crankbait. The reason I like the lipless is because you can kind of vary where in the water column that you work your bait. You're not set to one depth. So if you know you've got three to 10 foot of water, you can let it drop a little slower. You can kind of yo-yo it like we showed in some previous videos. And if you know they're sitting up tight in the shallows, you can burn it in quick or you can short hop it either way great ways to get a reaction bite in the summertime. And having some sort of rattle in your crankbait can make all the difference in those situations where there's a lot less visibility because a lot of the times it's just that noise that's driving them insane under the water and they'll search it out and you get a reaction bite out of it just that alone. One thing that I do see a lot of people do that I can't stress enough to you that you shouldn't do is wasting that last 15 to 20 feet of water in front of you, regardless of if you're fishing from the shore or a boat. You can honestly miss a ton of fish that way and I've caught a lot of fish in the last five, six feet of water in front of me. And as you can see, same thing here. This guy's about six or seven feet out, sitting in less than a foot of water. So it just goes to show that uh, even in a situation where you've got you know a little bit of clarity and you should be able to see them, sometimes you can't always see them. So it's a good idea to try to utilize as much of that water in front of you as possible and get the most out of every cast. As it gets later on in the day and the sun is straight overhead, we're still throwing that lipless crankbait, but we switched body styles to a more slender XPS style crankbait. The reason for that is we're throwing a little farther out in between some lanes of some heavy grass beds. And this is a great way to maintain that weedless presence cuts through 90% of that stuff and still has that great rattle to draw in those bass that maybe can't see it from as far out another thing if you don't already own a pair I would recommend you go out and pick yourself up a pair of polarized sunglasses not only a great way to spot fish 
but also to identify these open lanes and the weed beds like we're working in here and also uh, potentially problematic areas that could snag you up like laid down brush or trees things of that nature so a pair of good polarized sunglasses definitely a must have out in the water and something that I rarely fish without at any rate this goes to show you that you can catch fish in the middle of the day in the summer you just have to know where to target them and like we said what to throw at them another area where it becomes increasingly predictable to locate bass in the summertime especially in the middle of the day when the sun is straight overhead is underneath lily pads like these ones here and you don't always have to have a punching jig or work top water baits sometimes it's just enough to draw them out on the perimeter of the pads and get a bite and sure enough we threw a ned rig with a pink bubblegum Cinco on there and it was enough to bring him out from underneath the cover and get him to commit to a bite sometimes when it's just too hot the bite can really start to slow down situations like that you'd be surprised where switching to a ned rig or a shaky head worm can make all the difference i've honestly watched fish stare at my bait before for up to three or four minutes before taking it so in situations like that don't be afraid to just slow it down and take your time on this last one same situation middle of the afternoon 93 degrees out not a single cloud in the sky we switch that finesse setup this time we've got a small uh, black and white pearl shad imitation paddle tail swim bait on a texas rig with a little bullet weight and uh, like we said you don't always have to match the hatch sometimes it's more about color selection and the water clarity we got a little murkier water here, so we decided to throw that black and white to stick out a little more bold in that water. Sure enough, he hit it right in front of that laid down timber. So uh, just some great ways for you guys to catch bass during the summertime. Hopefully this has helped you guys not only get out and target those summer bass, but uh, you know, figure out what to throw at them and experiment with some different colors and different baits that maybe you haven't used before. And that's going to be it for today, guys. Hopefully you found this video helpful, enjoyed it. If you did, we'd love to hear from you. Don't hesitate to leave us a comment down below in the comment section. Hit that like button. Share this video with any of your friends or family that are into fishing. And as always, the best way to support us here at Kickin' Bass TV is to hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't already. If you want to stay up to date with our new release videos, just hit that bell notification right next to it. Until next time, guys, I'm D with Kickin' Bass TV. Subscribe!